gorgeous creatures and welcome back to another episode of on the couch with crazy shares yes this is crazy shares the one the only the fabulous as i known to my friends colleagues and clients if you don't know i've actually i am actually a stationary lecturer and has been teaching in design and the wedding industry for probably the last eight to to nine years and I absolutely love giving inspiration to students and new entrepreneurs alike. So I want to start a series of DIY projects, wedding projects for you at home. So today's episode is actually going to be broken into two parts. One being a digital part explaining the whole corral and designing aspect of the invitation and two the actual making of the invitation um, and this is the invitation in question so we're going to learn how to put it all together some tips and tricks about all your DIY needs remember if you like what you see remember to subscribe likes we like the likes and any comments we promise to answer every single comment on any one of our social media platforms so click that bell for the notifications here we go this is a two-part series we've already completed the corral digital part of um, this this episode click the information bell above if you want to see how we put it all together on Corel digitally before we went to print but now much ado about nothing let's get on to DIY all right we're going to do some digital foiling here I've printed out two samples one on a pearl finished paper and one on a matte finished paper Right. In my experience, I found matte finished papers work better for digital foiling. It just grabs better, it just gives a more finished look. All right. When we are doing digital printing, we also need to do 100% black laser print, not jet. We're going to then proceed to cutting out our um, elements, one being the main page, one being the information page, and two monograms. Here I'm cutting on a guillotine. I prefer a guillotine over a roller blade just because guillotines are more versatile for multiple um, items. A roller blade is great just for one, but in our industry we don't just do one invitation, we do multiple. So that's why investing in a good guillotine is um, always money well spent. All right. So here we're going to cut, and also the thing with uh, roller rulers and with guillotines is that you get to cut straight. Now, if you can't afford a guillotine at this stage, a good steel ruler and craft knife would work the same. You're going to cut out the two elements as well as the two monograms. And now we're going to measure up the jacket. Now, the jacket you can buy um, at a craft market or you can cut on your Cricut or Silhouette. What we are measuring up here is how big we're going to make the glitter background um, with the glitter board and we measure up here and we can see it's 150 by 145 not a perfect square but it's always important if we cut a 150 by 150 it would have been too big so what we're going to do is proceed cut two squares out of 150 by 145 then we take our monograms for the belly bands and we are going to measure that up and we see that it is 40 mils um, or four centimeters. Now to get a five mil border, we want to get it, um, take it up to 50 mil so that it is 50 mils on each side. And because it's a perfect square, we know that we can make it 50 mil. And now what's great about the guillotine, it's got lines to measure up so that you can get perfect sizing for your belly band um, embellishments. Just remember to be um, very cautious when using the guillotine that you don't chop off your fingers. All right, so here we can see that we've made the good choice. We can place it and see that we've got that five more border all around. 
just remembering because it wasn't a perfect square make sure you glue it the right way so that you have an equal border all the way around this is our digital foil what we're going to do is we're going to measure it out and we are going to size it up for the two information pages as well as the two monograms for the belly bands once you've got that cut out we are ready to step on to the digital foiling. Now with digital foiling, we need a envelope that is going to take it through the mink. Now the mink is just a heat laminator or controlled heat laminator that the foil can attach itself to the black print. What I tend to do is use the fold line as my guide because I seem to get a better finish when it's against a um, fold line. So remember, always put your foil silver side down or color side up. All right. And what I also tend to do is put a piece of wax paper in there. I just feel that it works wonderfully. Also, if you've got a color and only want to foil a partial of the invitation, wax paper doesn't um, let the ink transfer to the um, folder. So what we're going to do is we're going to get our mink out by Heidi Swab. We're going to take it up to level four and wait for the heat to the red light to heat up to go to green. All right. Then we take our folder again, make sure that we just run our hands over again so that we can have it perfectly flat and we don't have any ripples. Now ripples will cause deviations in the foiling and you don't want that. You're going to feed it into the mink folder side or closed edge side first and let it run through. When we take it out of the laminator and lift it up, we can see we've got a beautifully foiled finish. Now what the next stage we're going to use glue or tape. I actually like glue, especially when we're working with so many units. I like a B600. It's actually a bead glue. Strangely enough, not a craft glue. Or um, you can get a craft glue. But what I like about my B6000 is that it has a very thin nib and I can get very uh, delicate work in. So you, what you're gonna do is you're going to glue around the edges, not on the edge, just a little bit away um, from the edge so that you don't get glue through. Now, one thing that's important is whatever glue you do use, do a test. You don't want to have a glue that has, a, that has an acid base because you're going to see the marks come through. I know my bead glue works beautifully with this paper. Um, it's a strong bond and it works faster than tape. It also allows me to do a little bit of eyeball um, movement and placement where tape is a little bit more tricky to work with. Once we do that, we place it on and you do it to all four of your elements. Now we can move on to our jacket. I have chosen to do a um, long side jacket. Reason being is because we've got an insert once we place it in, it won't fall out. Moving on to the belly band, we're going to have this beautiful rose gold ribbon and it comes in a couple different sizes, one in a 20 mil and one in a 15 mil. I like to go slightly thinner on a belly band for the jacket, so I have chosen to use the 15 mil. What we're going to do is we're going to measure it out to um, the length of our jacket. Now, piece of advice, I would measure out one and then measure out the rest of your invitations. Factory style assembly goes faster than doing one on one. Now, I like using red tape. Now, red tape is a lot more um, adhesive than the paper tape. Yes, it's a lot more expensive, but you don't want your belly bands falling or coming apart. So what you're going to do is you're going to place tape on either side, one side up, and then you're going to twist it and put it onto the other side because you want an under and an over when you're sticking it together. I don't do one tape. I like using two. I need. I like to know that my belly band is well fastened. Then you take it up and around and you stick down your belly band. Make sure it's nice and tight, but not too tight that you can't get off and not too loose that it falls off. Now we're going to put our element on. We're going to use our red tape again and just put it down the middle. That extra hold because you sliding that belly band on and off is, is more advisable. 
Okay, here we've got a blue option just to show you how you can change up your design and your look and feel by just changing the color palette. It's amazing what a little color can do. You can also change up the um, embellishment. You can put a wax seal. Also changes the look and feel, makes it a lot soft. Now moving on to the envelope. And we're gonna repeat the same process we did with the jacket. So I've chosen again here a two, 20 millimeter rose gold ribbon, placing the tape on both ends, all right? Now I don't burn my ends when I am putting a embellishment on. Um, reason being the embellishment will hold the fray. But if you are not um, going to put an embellishment on, please, please um, fire the ends of your tape. Now a little point, put your invitation inside so that you get the right thickness um, for your belly band. And wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. We've got a beautiful DIY invitation with all the glitz and glam of a professional makeup. I hope you enjoyed that DIY as much as I enjoyed giving you all the information. I love teaching. It's one of my greatest passions and I am just so happy I could share this with you. Only more and bigger and better things to come. So that's me for today. Stay gorgeous.